Good morning and welcome to worship this morning on this third Sunday in Advent. Uh, we welcome all who have gathered here today uh, from Messiah Lutheran Church in Amherst and Christ the King Lutheran Church in Nashua. It has been a joy to partner together um, over the last several weeks and one more week to go in this season. If you are visiting with us today or today is the first time you've popped in to check us out, Welcome. We're glad that you're here and we invite you to take part in any and all of the service as you feel called. I invite you to take a second to press pause um, if you have not already downloaded the worship bulletin for today. Inside that bulletin you will find uh, prayers and hymns and scripture and various uh, portions of our liturgy um, that will help you to follow along more fully in the service. So just press pause Go to, to CTK or uh, Messiah's website or Facebook page, download the uh, bulletin and come right back. We'll be right here. Let us enter into worship today with the litany. We dream God's dream of a world at peace where enemies are reconciled and children play in safety where the poor and powerless find justice, where love is the rule and joy abounds. Come, Lord Jesus. We remember God's promise of a ruler of peace, filled with the spirit of God, of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, of justice and faithfulness. Come, Lord Jesus. As we enter into worship today, we hold fast to hope and pray as one. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Open our lives to the peace which you bring. Let us turn to you and get ready. Here's him 251, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness. with you and also with you let us pray together the prayer of the day stir up the wills of your faithful people Lord God and open our ears to the words of your prophets that anointed by your spirit we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen
A reading from Isaiah, the 61st chapter. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. A reading from Luke, the first chapter. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promises he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation of Christ's advent. As we light the candles on the wreath, strengthen our hearts as we await the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose days draws near. Amen. Oh, 
Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Today, our gospel reading is actually the alternate reading for today. You see, the first gospel reading that is most often used is the passage in John, where John the Baptist is approached by those who came to question him. To came, came to question him and his teaching, and he basically says, I'm speaking of the one whom I am unworthy to even untie his sandals. But today, today we have chosen to pull in the alternate reading, partly because I believe that historically, and even still today, we do a major disservice to Mary and subsequently a disservice to all normal, regular people that God calls to be carriers of the living word in this world. Let me explain. You see, if you listen to preachers on TV or to a local Christian radio station or you read various devotionals, you will see repeatedly that Mary, the mother of our Lord, is put down or maligned as weak, silent, mild, and sometimes a mindless woman, whom God just happened to choose to birth Jesus. Truly, this has gone on for thousands of years in the church and in the wider world, and it has impacted not only Mary and her story, but untold folks throughout history who as a result of Mary's discounting, they too have been discounted, hushed, or pushed aside. A prime example that many of us are familiar with is the song, Mary Did You Know? I first heard this song when the acapella group Pentatonix released their version, and I have to tell you, I love this song. I will sing it any time it comes on. It is one of those tunes that kind of haunts your mind and never leaves you, gets stuck in your head. But the lyrics of this song portray Mary as having no idea of the magnitude of the role she is invited to live. No idea of the magnitude of what is taking place within her and through her. One of the verses goes like this. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? That sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Here's my problem. Mary did know the magnitude of the child that she was carrying. Mary did know that he would rule the nations, that he was Lord of all creation. Mary did know. And Mary was told of this enormous opportunity she was invited into. Mary proclaimed herself in what we now call the Magnificat, how powerful and world-changing the child that she was carrying was to this world. Mary did know. And Mary said yes to God, to the invitation to be a part of this. Mary did know. And we see reflected throughout the rest of the Gospels, accounts of Jesus' life on earth that Mary knew. From asking Jesus to turn water into wine at a wedding, to pondering the things in her heart as she saw the path that lay ahead of her child, to her standing at the foot of the cross as her child dies for the life of the world. Mary did know. But our world doesn't like powerful women who change things, who take an active role in the transformation of this world. This is seen in songs like Mary Did You Know, but also in the images that come forth, especially during this season, that show a soft, very pale, weak Mary who never speaks a word, 
never raises her head, never is seen for the powerful world transformative leader and co-creator that she is. And to be fair, we can't take all the blame for this. After all, we didn't place our patriarchal system in power, but we've enabled it. We don't often seek to subjugate, subjugate women, treating them as property or even worse. Overtly, anyway. Even in the biblical story, we have been given stories of women seen as the very least of humanity often not being brave enough to learn the fuller story or challenge that positioning. We're not alone, but we, we, we don't own this alone, but we do help to create this system where women are seen as secondary. But we can and we are called to listen, to look, and to hold up the powerless, the voiceless, the faceless people who are part of God's creation, who have a role to play in the continued unfolding of the gospel story that God has brought us into. This is our job, to work to begin to see for ourselves, to listen and to make space for those names those stories, those people who are pushed aside, to be seen and heard as they truly are, with the systems of power, abuse, and silencing being dismantled and changed for the sake of all people. So today we hear Mary. Today we see Mary. And my hope is that today we can see her for the powerful, courageous, and faithful person that she is. And I pray that in seeing her, we are reminded that we too have been given a call to be powerful and to be courageous in our faith in this world. As we entered into the gospel story today, Mary, who was just told by Gabriel that she was pregnant with child. And then she sets off to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who in her old age has become pregnant as well. Mary arrives at the house of Elizabeth and Zechariah, and Elizabeth greets her. And as she does, her own child leaps in her womb. Elizabeth, and note without Mary saying a single word, proclaims Mary's blessedness and the great gift that the child is in her womb. That even her own unborn child knows the power, the miracle, the gift that is to be born from her. This doesn't say to me, oh look, there's poor little Mary, small, young, weak, no idea what's going on, but God chose her anyway. Not at all. This says to me that the power that Mary is carrying and the power and courage that Mary herself is, is such that even without a word, it is known, known by Elizabeth and known by the child in her womb. Elizabeth ends with the line, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Blessed is she who believed that God's promise was going to be fulfilled by her. Blessed is she who believed, courageously believed against the odds of the world that the world and society had taught her. Boldly believed that the God whom she had come to know would honor her and invite her to participate in bringing about God's plan. Strongly believed and said yes to God's call in her life, the call to be the mother of our Lord. Blessed is she who believed. Courageous is she who believed. Bold is she who believed. Strong is she who believed. Mary 
mother of our Lord. Then Mary spoke. And let's note at the start that she didn't speak mildly, meekly. She didn't whisper in Elizabeth's ear. She didn't send a text message because she was afraid of speaking in public. As a matter of fact, she spoke to Elizabeth in Elizabeth and Zechariah's house, a place that would have been quite public due to Zechariah's role in the temple as a priest. And she spoke words, words that have come to be known as Mary's song or the Magnificat. Words that weren't about, oh, how am I, poor, young, timid Mary, going to do this? Or why would God choose me? But rather words that spoke to the power, the movement, and the ministry that God had invited her to partner in. You see, Mary understood herself as the one who was carrying this unborn child in her womb, the child who had been promised of old, the child who was the savior of the world. Mary fully grasped and took hold of her role in this world-changing mission. Mary was chosen to birth the Son of God, the mighty one who came to scatter the proud, bring down the rich and powerful, and raise up the lowly, the forgotten, the pushed aside. This mighty one, this savior of the world who Mary would birth and raise was the one who had already filled the hungry and sent the rich away hungering for true food. Mary, this one servant of God, had been invited into a role that meant the difference between life and death. Life and death for that unborn baby in her womb and life and death for the world, the world that God created. Blessed is she who believed. Courageous is she who believed. Bold is she who believed. Strong is she who believed. Mary, the mother of our Lord, believed in God, the creator of this world, who had promised a savior was to be born among the people. Mary, the mother of our Lord, believed in herself as a child of God who was chosen to birth this promise into the world. Mary, the mother of our Lord, stood strong in her faith, in her courage, in her own power to not only say yes to God, but to say yes to the world. Yes, world, look at me carrying the promised Savior. Yes, world, look at me, the person you dismiss simply because I am a woman. Yes, world, look at me, the woman you dismiss because I am young. Yes, world, look at me, the woman you dismiss because I am carrying a child while not yet wed. Yes, world, look at me, the woman you dismiss because you think I am weak because you think I am timid, because you think I am small, look at me and remember me. Remember my passion, remember my courage, remember my faithfulness, remember my strength, remember my active participation in God's unfolding plans. Remember me. It's quite a different image than the meek, humble, and downward face that we see on far too many Christmas cards. And I want to ask us today, what does this new image, this new look at Mary do for us or do to us? As we hold up a mirror and look at ourselves, what do we see? Do we see the weak, know nothing, little, not worth much person that we are continually told we are by the world? You know, the one who needs this type of car or house or job to be seen? You know the one who needs to be hanging out with these people or speaking these words to be known. You know the one who needs to have all these awards, this amount of money and this much societal power to make a difference. This is the person that the world wants us to see. 
that the world needs us to see in order for the world, for society to be the power, the source, the meaning of life. But look again. Look at who you are. Who you are to the God who came into this world as a child. Who you have been created to be by the one who created this whole world. Because what the world tries to tell us is not the truth. Who the world tries to make us be is not who we are. Who we have been made to think we are is not who God calls us to be. In fact, God has called us, you and me, to be co-creators in this world, just as Mary, the mother of God. God has gifted us with strength, with power, and with vision that defies who the world says that we are. And it's not about power over others. It's not about strength for our egos. It's not about courage to do our own thing. No, it is a power. It is a strength and a courage that brings forth new life in this world when the world does all it can to kill. It is a power and a strength and a courage that claims our identity and proclaims to the world another way. It is a power, a strength, and a courage that looks nothing like what the world knows as power, strength, and courage in order that we can be active participants in ushering in God's new kingdom here, now, in and through us, you and me. So hear this good news today and in the days to come. As we await the birth of our Savior and the return of the Christ child, especially during this current COVID reality of our world, may we, like Mary, know that we have each been called and gifted in order that we will birth new life and hope and love in this world. We have each been gifted and called, even when, especially when, the world tells us that we are nothing so that the weak are made strong and the hungry are fed. We have each been called and gifted so that God's new kingdom is ushered in for all people, the young and the old, the women and the men, the gay and the straight, the hungry, the sick, the forgotten, the refugee, the outcast, the sinner, all, the whole lot of us, we have been called and gifted, just like Mary, not to be timid and mild, but to be bold and courageous in God's love in order that God's love is birthed on earth through us, by us, within us. She did know. And blessed is she who believed. Courageous is she who believed. Bold is she who believed. Strong is she who believed. Mary, mother of our Lord. May we know. And blessed are we who believe. Courageous are we who believe. Bold are we who believe. Strong are we who believe. You and me. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O oh God. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice. Speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, tend those who are sick or struggling with depression, and gather all people in your healing embrace, including all those on our prayer list and those we name aloud. Hear us, O God. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth, make even the disparities between your people, sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities, accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all, teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O God. Here, other intercessions may be offered. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O God. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of promise, you set before us a feast of good gifts, gifts that satisfy our hearts and souls like nothing else can. As we continue to gather together but apart, we long evermore for the fullness of your promise, your presence, our presence with one another. Open our hearts and minds this day to receive the promise in these gifts, leaning into the future that is coming, the new life that is now. And so we enter into this promise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant to my blood, given and shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All is prepared and all are welcome. If you would like to receive communion today, we invite you to come to Christ the King's parking lot between 11 in the morning and noon, and there you will receive the elements and you'll be able to serve yourselves and get a blessing as well. We hope you will all come. Thank you. Now receive the blessing. The creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 